Happy Monday, babies. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about the sleepy kitty. And no, I don't mean the fucking cat that is sitting next to you. I mean the one that is in between your legs. Because I get this question all the time, Miranda, why can't I feel anything during sex? Why do I feel a numbness? Why can't I get my clit to be activated and awake? What is going on and what is wrong with me? And I am here to tell you that this condition is way more normal and way more common than you and I would like to believe and think. But first, before we get started, I want to take this moment to thank you all for supporting me and bringing me to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I am super, super grateful. This whole time I've been begging for you to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and just support me. And you guys have pulled through and showed me how much you truly care and want me to succeed. And that is something that means so much to me that I can't even put into words. So thank you so much. And if you are new here, please join the pack of the babies and subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button because this video is about to blow your mind if you have a vulva. But let's get started. So when I say sleepy pussy, sleepy vulva, sleepy clit, <coughs> sleepy clit, you know, what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about an overall numbness in the vulva area. Yeah, sensations that you should be able to feel that you're not feeling. Like, wake the fuck up. So that is why I refer to it as the sleepy pussy. Now sex is supposed to be pleasurable, whether it's self-pleasure or whether it's pleasure with a partner or partners. Either way, you are supposed to feel good. You're supposed to feel charged and fucking enhanced and feeling all those little sensations. And when you're not, it can be stressful, it can give you anxiety, and it can definitely fucking be frustrating. And I know because I have definitely been there. Actually, I had this spurt probably about three to four months ago, and I was like, fuck me, here's that sleepy pussy again. What can I do to make it better? So I'm gonna tell you some of the things that might be causing your sleepy pussy. Number one one and it can fucking kill you it's like the silent little snake of a killer so it's gonna kill your pussy too and it's not gonna murder it in a good way it is fucking stress stress is gonna be the root of all evil for your fucking pussy it is not good if you are stressed we need to figure this out okay also an untreated mood disorder that is something that tends to be more often common than not especially with the current situation that we are going through right now i.e covid if you are watching this in the future which would be fucking no but yes untreated mood disorders can definitely be a cause and even if you are being treated for something like anxiety or depression or bipolar borderline personality whatever it might be those medications are quite aggressive and can really play a huge role in your sex drive and in your sensations that your body is feeling obesity is another one so if you are obese and you have some other underlying health conditions that can also that can also be a cause of the sleepy kitty because you're not always going to be getting proper blood circulation and that is exactly what happens during the arousal phase so the sleepy kitty might be one of the symptoms of being obese but might not be the primary issue also these things that we love oh so very much example is alcohol tobacco drugs whether they're legal or illegal these all have an impact on your sexual health so yeah, some of these can really downplay your orgasm or actually completely block it or fuck exactly like this video title is called Make Yo Pussy Sleepy. It's catching Z's because it has been slapped to shit and is fucking numb as fuck. And we don't want that. And last but not least is gonna be excessive masturbation. Now, I always talk about self-pleasure and how important it is to understand your own body, but there is too much and too much can cause desensitization. Then maybe it's time to lock up that nightstand just for a few days and let your pussy rest. As I had mentioned earlier with the bipolar, the depression, the anxiety, pretty much anything under the mental health umbrella, usually when you are diagnosed with one of these things, you are prescribed an antipsychotic or basic SSRI. Whatever your medication choice might be, the same thing goes with birth control. People do not realize how much your hormones actually can impact your body. So if you have any hormone condition or think you do, it is always a really good thing to talk to your doctor. And yes, 
Birth control is a medication. It fucks with your hormones. So if you are on something that doesn't jive with you, tell your OBGYN or your regular doctor or your nurse practitioner. They are there to help. They are not there to shame. If they are shaming, leave them a shit review and switch up your care provider. Okay, but now what you really came here for is the treatment. Miranda, how the fuck am I gonna get my clit to wake the fuck up? Well, let's start with this. Give yourself some slack, patience. Give yourself some self-compassion. If your partner couldn't finish or if your partner couldn't get an erection, if they are a penis owner, you're not gonna sit there and shame them, are you? And if you are, I'm looking at you like, what the fuck is your problem? Grow the fuck up, bitch. Because it's not your fault. Obviously, you want your organs to function optimally and you want them to do what they're supposed to do. Fuck, we're fucking because I want to feel pleasure and I want to feel something, honey. So no, I don't want to sit here and freaking feel nothing. So if you wouldn't talk to your best friend that way and you wouldn't talk to your partner that way, then don't fucking talk to yourself that way. Patience, understand your body, and figure out why this is happening. So a great place to start with your treatment is actually going to see your doctor, your care provider, your OB, whoever you feel feel most comfortable with. The more that you practice self-compassion and understanding your own body alleviates some of that performance anxiety that you might be giving yourself. Now, performance anxiety in the sense of when you go into the bedroom, you're already thinking you're not gonna achieve orgasm or your clit is gonna be sleeping already. And that's not good either because you're just pushing that bar further away. Where if you go into it with an open mind thinking maybe this is gonna be it and just no expectations. Go for the expectation of not having expectations. <laughs> Funny how that works. What the fuck does that mean, Miranda? Well, we tend to look at sex as an orgasm goal orientated activity, we'll call it, when it doesn't always need to be, especially when it comes from a female's perspective. Did that feel good? I always talk about how I want to catch my O, but you know, realistically, sometimes it doesn't happen, but it doesn't mean that I didn't personally enjoy my time. My partner just has the evidence that they finish, but fuck, sometimes he didn't finish either. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and say that that's an awful thing for me to do or it's an awful thing for him to feel. If he's okay with it, then that's chill. And if I'm okay with it, then it's chill. If I want more, he wants more and wants to keep trying, then we will. And that's the beautiful part of communication. So another thing to branch off of what I just said is having a caring and compassionate partner. You don't want somebody who's selfish, uncaring, not patient. You want somebody who wants to put in the work. They want to help you try to feel that pleasure. They're not just in it to get their nut and then peace. You want to be with somebody who genuinely actually cares. You want that caring person in the bedroom with you, especially when you are feeling frustrated and down that you could not achieve climax or that you couldn't feel anything. The last thing you need is somebody else shaming you when you're already doing self-shame on yourself. A really great tool that you can do either by yourself or with your partner is vulva mapping. So actually understanding the anatomy of your vulva and the way you like to be touched. So you can play with toys, you can play with fingers, you can do tongues, different sensations in different areas of your vulva. And you can see which way you maybe like to be stroked, licked, fucked, whatever it might be. It might just be a communication issue that you are having with your partner. Because in some instances, I have all the owners messaging me saying, I can do it with myself, but I can't feel anything with my partner. So if that's the case, then that's where you branch off into communication and you really try to educate your partner and play around and try to figure out what best suits your needs. And like I said before, and the point above us is that you should be with a caring partner. Okay. Now, if you do have any sexual trauma or just trauma in general, and you believe that that could be actually the root cause of what is going on, please do not be afraid to reach out to a counselor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, whatever you need to do to talk to somebody to work through that. Because all of that trauma that we're just building up on the inside and we're not letting out and expressing, that can really impact us in multiple different avenues of our life, not just sexually. Just remember that you are never alone and you always have people to talk to. My biggest point that I wanna get across in this video is that you are not alone and you are not different. Many of all the owners everywhere have experienced a sleepy clit, sleepy pussy, sleepy vulva at some point in their life, whether it be 
from overstimulation, whether it be from medication or whether it be from menopause or just a clusterfuck of different things. Either way, it is best for you to reach out to your practitioner and address these situations before they slip out of your hands. And hey, maybe you can kill two birds with one stone when you go. Maybe there's something deeper that you're looking at rather than just a sensation issue. Anyways, I hope this video gave you some insight on your vulva and your sleepy issues. If this video helped you at all or spiked a little interest in you, give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new here, please subscribe because we are on our way to 6,000. Yeah. Okay. I will see you next Monday, babies.